secrets. You want the fire look for me? He, he, seek it. Eat the, eat the. Guys, man, welcome back to another episode of Nothing But Heat. Today, we have a Chicago legend on the barbershop, on the barber side, on um, Marcus Davis. Welcome, Marcus. Welcome. What up, what up, what up, what up? What up, what up y'all? What's going on? Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Marcus is a celebrity barber. Uh, he's been cutting hair. How long have you been cutting hair? Man, you know it's a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. o- over three decades. That's what's up. Over three decades. Yeah. For real. So, oh, shit, that's what, like, 90s, early 90s? No, we're talking about shit. In the early, in the, in the mid 80s. Man. Yeah. So, when, when, when did you start cutting? Well, do I supposed to tell my age on this or no? Oh, you already, you already <laughs> did. Like, like, yeah, man, like, what age? What age would you, like, cutting out the house? I was, like, 10 years old when I first started, when I first cut my own hair. Okay. And it came, it and it, it, it went good until <laughs> I went back in there. This is when I learned to leave well enough alone, using that term, mm-hmm. leave well enough alone. I went and I cut my hair myself in the bathroom, using my, this is my story. On my with my sister's uh, boyfriend Clippers at the time, and I did a perfect job. It was nice. We're talking about this like 1983, 84, some stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't believe I cut my own hat. You had like a taper. It was just like one. No, was, you know, back then, yeah. you know, you had a, either a ball fade or a bowl or just even all over. Yeah. It was even all over. It was yeah. even all over with a line. And I lined myself up. Okay. And they couldn't believe I did it myself in the bathroom. I'm like, man, it's 10 o'clock at night. Mama, who else in the house? Right, right. I got hair on the floor and on the sink. That's I got a little mirror, you know. And um, from there, I went back in the bathroom thinking I could make it better than what it looked. Oh, shit. And put a huge ball spot on the top of my oh, head. Oh, shit. What made you do yeah. that, though? Because was- I thought that it was like, you know, maybe it was something else I needed to do. Because yeah, they were yeah, giving yeah. me praises. They was like, you did that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did this myself. Feeling all good and all proud. And then, too perfect. my mom, she took some, what's that, mascara, a little mm-hmm. eyeliner. And put it on the top of my head. Because oh, <laughs> I had a ball like this big. So you, you was really me. the first person with Beijing. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eyeliner for Beijing. <laughs> right. Eyeliner for Beijing. I was like 10, 11 years old, man. I, I, I won't forget it. It was hilarious. But then I learned what I, I seen what I did wrong. Yeah. And I learned to leave well enough alone. Okay. And so that got me to a point where I know how to cut a certain head. Mm-hmm. When I see it's good for me, I don't even care what you think no more. Yeah. As a client. Because if you coming to me, you coming to me for a reason. Yeah. You coming to me because I can do what you need done. So when I see it's good for me, it's gotta be good for you. Cause you don't have the same eye that I have as a hairstylist, as a barber. You know what I'm saying? So they, they put their trust in you. Once, you alone. once you sit in that barber chef and you it's got over. that bond with that with that barber, yeah. you already know what it is. It's you know what I'm saying? Like, you let them do what they do. Once you find a good barber, man, you locked in. Man. Yeah. So barber for life, unless something else changes, you move or something else happens. But most people don't like bouncing around from barber to barber. Right. Correct. So, That's true. So we want to get like right into our first topic um, today. We're going to talk about branding. Um, I know you got to a level now where you're on television. So um, how did you early on start branding your services? You know what? I kind of like started, which is funny in the sense, I kind of like started making myself unavailable to certain people. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's different. On purpose. To see how much they needed me mm-hmm. or wanted my services. And I upped my price. Okay. And I upped my price by staying away. And I took that sacrifice on purpose. That's a good strategy. Yeah. It's, very yeah, good. it's a good strategy. You got to sit on a little bread. Humble yourself and just sit back and say, you know what? There's a certain place that I need to get to every month, every year, every two years, every three years, every five years. And you got to make that goal for yourself personally. Mm -hmm. Something that's untold, something that's not said to nobody. It's just in your mind and your heart and your own personal vision. Okay. So I branded myself that way on on a different level. And then things just started coming in that I couldn't even control. 
you know, and I just had to make myself available to those things. Right. So, so like when people get in the haircut, like man, I've ever, as soon as they get like, man, I gotta hit Marcus up because he's always booked, so I gotta, I gotta hit him up two weeks, a week in advance, you know what I'm saying, pay that extra bread, something like that. So that's definitely a good strategy, you know what I'm saying, especially yeah. as a barber and things like that. Yeah. Well, well, starting off, okay, so when you started off, how did you set your pricing? I, uh, like what was the average price for a haircut? Well, back then, back then, you got to think, man. Haircuts was ten dollars, eight dollars, you know, five dollars for a line. You know, barbers nowadays want twenty five, thirty dollars for a line. You know what I'm saying? You know, forty, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars for haircuts and stuff like that. You know, so back then, you know, it was about. It wasn't even about the price. It was about the love of what you do. And right. and here it is. How many heads can you cut in a day? Mm -hmm. Oh, I did twenty. Oh, I did fifteen. I did thirty. I did forty. Okay. I used to do that at one point in time, and it didn't matter what how much money I made because I knew I was gonna make some money every day. All I had to do was open my eyes and thank God for getting me up in the morning to go do something that I love to do. Yeah. And that was it. I got the proof. I got cop tunnel. Got knots all on my wrist. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So like, would you? Um, recommend for somebody that's starting off to try to get as many heads as you can to get your clientele up, or would you recommend people setting higher prices and limiting that um, amount of clients? Well, I would say uh, sow seeds okay. into people's lives, and you don't want to just because right now I'm. I told somebody earlier. I said, you know, I don't want to just cut somebody. You know, because you can make money off any kind of person, but you want somebody that's going to be around you that's going to be of value. Okay. So bring people around you that's of value to your life that you don't mind being in your circle because you all going to exchange energy. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. so it's certain energy you don't want around you no matter who they are. That's facts. That's facts. It's a lot of people that have, a, you know what I'm saying, especially males that have a, a strong bond with their, with their bar. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right. just not in that chair, you know what I'm saying, they invite them to, right. they invite them to the house. So it's just certain games. energies yeah. around me that I don't want around me no matter how much you're giving me. Right, right. Exactly. Or how much you got. Yeah. You know, so that don't even matter to me no more because I feel like this, I've been blessed my entire life. Right. God has blessed me and mine and my family my entire life. Right. So, I can go eat a, <laughs> a doggone cowboy tomahawk steak tomorrow. Every day if I wanted to. Right. And pay $250, 300 for a steak. Every day. Mm -hmm. So the difference of you having and exchanging that negative energy is mm -hmm. priceless. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, because you know, we always had good energy. I, I first came to your shop. He was disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even so, even when, you know, um your shop techniques is out in Calumet City. Correct. Even when um we moved back to the city, I was still catching the bus just to get a haircut. You know, mm -hmm. so you've always, you know what I'm saying, been available to cut hair. So no, um, when you work with different clients, how do you build that relationship to them? Because you know some clients at times may want you to jump up right there and there to cut their hair. So how do you build your relationship with your clients so that you have a set schedule and you're able to please every client? And that's the thing, I don't have a set schedule. And that's why me personally, I don't have one of those quote unquote uh, apps that yeah. people set, yeah. they, yeah. That's how set, they, now. Yeah. set their appointments off on mm -hmm. because they have these apps where they say, uh, well, you know, why you don't have Style Seed or Boot Seed? Mm -hmm. I don't know to put different names out there, but you know, they got certain apps where you mm -hmm. open up and you can just put your client. Yeah, info. Hey, I tell them like this, depending on how I feel when I wake up, I might cancel everybody <laughs> and send y'all y'all $15 or $20 or $30 deposit back. Yeah. Depending on what kind of phone call I get, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm thankful to be in that kind of place to be able to do that. So I have to communicate. So communication is it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I communicate with everybody. Yeah. And like, how you keep up, keep up with all them people? It's what I really do. Okay. And that's and that's a bond because having an app, there's no actual verbal communication. Right. There's no, you know, there's no real connection. <clears throat> Right. And you don't want to just have your app open and then here it is, somebody named whatever, 
booked an appointment and you don't know who that is. Right. And you don't know where they're coming from. And that's the thing with You don't know what referral they came from. And that's, the, and that's the thing with technology in, in any type of profession or like we were talking about before, with, even with dating or speaking with people, you lose that that face-to-face -face energy. Like you said, like... I need that. You need, you need that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they... Vibrations, they, energy. Exactly, I need energy. that. You don't know that over the, over the phone. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You don't know... That's how I tell people sometimes. You can't assume... Sometimes you gotta put LOL at the sentence just for just, a person to understand that you that's in a joking matter. That's the non disclosure. Right, part. you know what I'm saying? Right. Like in a joking matter. So you can laugh at all. Right, right, exactly. But you know, some people could take it the wrong way because yeah. it's not a face to face image. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. and, and back to the back to the branding, do you do you use social media a lot to brand more now? Or I don't. You don't? Okay. Uh I like social media, it's fun, uh, because like I said, when, when I started, social media didn't even yeah, exist. For sure. So everything was word of mouth, so when you got word of mouth from this person to that person, especially being in the entertainment business, from one actor to another actor having your number and they told another actor to give you a call or another director or another producer, that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Before social media. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook ever existed. I did my first film in 1995. First movie. What movie? You know what I'm saying? I can't speak of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it never came out though. Yeah. Okay. But, but you I, was on set. 1995. I was on set. I was on set working on an actual film. And I'll tell you, I was with Bernie Mac, Lisa Ray, Mel Jackson was doing his first film, or uh, Bonnie Deshawn from a uh, radio station. That was my very first film. I was like 22, 23 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was, it was some decent money at the time because I had never seen that before. You know, in, in 1995 as a barber. Yeah. Barbers weren't making that kind of money. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Unless you probably owned a hair salon mm -hmm. or something like that. But uh, it is my little black ass shoe. I was born and raised right here on 14th and Loomis. Yeah. So to me, to do this in my own city mm -hmm. and get and, and do all these other films and become one of the first black male hair, uh, hairstyles and barbers in the film industry union. Come on, man. That's what's up, you know. So what was your first breakthrough film that you worked? Um, it was that one. But with that, I met so many different people, mm -hmm. and I I was told like you know how they say. One job always leads to another. Mm -hmm. And here it comes a few years later, I made relationships with different people. And then, you know, what well, barbershop took the case. I had already did like little small jobs here and there. I had worked with Spike Lee before barbershop, the movie barbershop even came about. And then, uh, man, it just, barbershop, road bounce, transformer, Superman, the shy, Chicago fire, Chicago PD, Chicago med, all those oh, shows. Now who, we have the shot here. And, we're talking from 95 to, what is it, what year is 21, 2021. 21. Still relevant, still doing what I do, and um, and it's just still evolving, it's just still going. I keep getting calls. I got a call for three shows last week that's here in Chicago. You know, and it's like, wow. And that's amazing, without the help of social media, that show. That's without the help of social media. Social, now, now none of these jobs that you see go to my Instagram or it's, it's not on there. Yeah. These are actual phone calls from producers, directors, actual relationships. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's so up, that's man. that's big. And that's that's different because most people, you know, especially the young generation now and including us, we you know, we use social media to, you know, help us brand. It's not a hundred percent that, but we use that to help us brand because that's all this generation basically and knows. See, and that's what I tell people in the young generation. You gotta have some substance of your own yeah. Yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Substance of your own <clears throat> first. And then social media is just another extra nudge, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A little extra help. That's what's up. But don't let that be your soul. I tell people all the time, if that if that social media go down one day, <laughs> man, if you ever if you ever been on social media and like I remember all the time when Instagram would go down, Twitter would go down, everybody all go to one app. 
yeah. and just start talking about, oh my God, like, I remember, I think Instagram was down for a day. Yeah. And I think all the Instagram, you know, say celebrities and stuff like that, that weren't making money, like these Instagram models, they making money daily. Right. So it was one day, one day it was down for a day and they weren't making no money, boy, all hell. Sick. Sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, better, better shake that ass on Twitter then. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's go get some retweets, some likes. All right, for sure, yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. So when, when did you realize like, damn, I'm actually good at my craft? Um, probably like, when I was in high school, when I was in high school, probably like my sophomore, junior year in high school, that was a turn for me to be like, you know what? I, I cut hair in the, at the crib every weekend. Mm -hmm. I've been cutting hair in the basement, cutting hair over here. I had a, at, at one point in time before high school, I was on a bike, riding my bike, cutting hair. I had my backpack, new clippers in it, cutting hair. I'm like, man, you know what? I make money every day after school. That's a good feeling. I make money every day after school. So then here it is, I, I got to looking at what I did every weekend. Here it is on, on Friday and, or, or, or Saturday. I'm, I'm doing like, Four, five hundred dollars yeah. every weekend. Especially as a young person too. That's a lot of money. I'm, I'm making 30, 35, 40 grand a year at seven, 16, 17 years old. And didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm having fun. <laughs> were were barbershops like relevant back then or were it was wasn't oh, yeah. it like a lot of house house calls back then? No, barbershops was relevant. <clears throat> yeah, it was a good business then and the and the business was was booming all over. I mean, sometimes I think some people still wearing cherry curls. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But but business was still booming. Business was still going good for hair salons and barbershops. Uh, but I was still making house calls and and going in barbershops at the same time. And like, man, you know what? If you can make money every day, what you need to go to school for? Because all people need to do is survive. Yeah. All people need to do is survive to live, to, to pay their bills, if they got bills, buy a car. You need money, you need finances in order to do that. <clears throat> you don't need debt. You don't need debt. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur for the rest of my life. Okay. I mean, I feel like- You made that decision at 17? No, I made that decision and when I was like 13. 13? Oof. But at 17, to answer his questions, when I said, I'm really good at this, because I didn't know what I really wanted to do. I wanted okay. to draw, I wanted to be an architect. But me doing hair, it just came so easy. It was like waking up and opening your eyes. It was that easy. And I love, I mean, I love doing what I'm doing. And I'm, I didn't have to get all these uh, so-called lessons on how to do this. Yeah. It was, Fluent. It was easy, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm showing other people, you know, at the, at the time. It was like, wow, it, it just came too easy. That's what's up. Yeah. What's like in the barbershop? I see a lot of things go down. What's the wildest? Have you uh, have you ever dealt with a disgruntled client with they're not being happy with your, you know, saying with the haircut and things yeah. like that? How's that's that? normal. Yeah. That's For myself or just in general? Oh, um, both. Both, but you is now, so I can't like you know what I'm saying. I'm racing. I look at it like this. I look at it like this. So sometimes you got clients, right? And they come and they go. So if you got a client that don't come to you anymore, right? Mm -hmm. They basically fired you. Right. Right. So I'm in a place where. I got a client that's sitting in the chair. I don't like his energy. Mm -hmm. I don't like their energy, her energy, whoever. I'm firing you, you can't come back no more. Mm -hmm. And how would you go about doing that in your profession? When they call, when they try to call my phone, I'll give them their last free hack. I say, you know what, it's all good, it's on me. Don't even trip. Much love, bro. Oh, for real? Thanks, bro. Oh, so love. 
That yeah, means you ain't come back. That phone call will never get answered. <laughs> if you get a free haircut, right, that means you don't want your ass back. <laughs> Boom, For sure. you're done. I'm going to give you a free, so that way you can't never say that, man, he did me wrong. Yeah. No, I did you right. Because one haircut is not going to crumble my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what brings that type of client? Is it somebody being too picky? Is it um, them not coming on time? Or what well, makes you all, not want to have all those things. Not coming on time. Always finding something wrong with your work, okay. but still want to keep coming. Okay. There's no reason for you to keep coming to me if you always finding something wrong. Right. And when you leave, you'll call me and be like, hey, next time when you cut my hair. Now, you just left like two hours ago. I'm still in here working. But you just left and you call me or text me and say, hey, M, can you do such, 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 such next time? What are you talking about? Why don't you tell me the next you time I see you? Yeah. You can call me telling me that now. They always give you the mirror. Yeah. They let you know how it is. You can say, hey, you just write your It's little always little it's always some oil. You got clients, <laughs> you got clients that try to create stuff on their face that ain't there. <laughs> man, you're it's lying. Like, always down. It's like man, you're lying. Always back there. Yeah. Man, you, yeah. you, you, that you, used to be me, like man, live on my stage show, <laughs> man. Prank no bro. It's <laughs> old. <laughs> it's I ain't get a mustache since I was like 25. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, he, look, he just started growing this little yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, I just got my own. <laughs> oh, he got nothing. So that, I'll leave you on that, so, man. I know what you need like, to do. Man, can you make sure that this is right here? Like, dude, yeah. line of I'm going to spray it with some Beijing or this, this, that, or whatever it is. It ain't coming. It ain't Hair coming. is not coming. Yeah. How do you feel about, like, the enhancements? Like, when you see barbers do the Beijing and they, they do a lot of enhancements. Like, because oh, you see the videos on social media, like, barbers yeah. do, like, a lot of extra things. Now, how do you feel about that? I think it's cute. <laughs> cute. But you know what? You should be able to uh, sometimes create those looks with, without it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? As a barber, if you want to do that. Now, enhancements are good. Not knocking it. Like, you know, especially for like hair shows or if you're doing portfolios for, for photos and things like that. But I don't think it's an everyday look. Okay. I don't think a guy should get enhancements in his head every week after he gets his hair cut. Okay. You know, you, you, you're going to go walk the runway, you're going to go do this, you're going to go do that, or is this just something you're going to do? You're about to mess up your pillows once you get home. Mm -hmm. you, you're about to mess up your girl clothes if y'all going out tonight. If y'all going out tonight, okay, cool. But I don't think it's, I don't think enhancements is for every single week or every two week guy haircuts. Some special occasions. I think it's special occasions, but that's me. Right. You know, I might be wrong to some people, Whatever, I don't care. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But that's my thought about it. You have, know what I'm saying? have you ever did one of those um what they call it? The guys two pays too. Like, oh yeah. You did that? Well yeah. you have to do that um I heard, I, heard, I heard that it takes a, a lot of time. Like a few hours, you know what I'm saying? It costs a lot. You know what I'm saying? You gotta maintain it, but Jesus Christ. You got guys that wanna wear them. And you know, regular guys that don't want nobody to know that they got one on. I mean women do it too. Yeah, so facts. that's that's the, that's the, that's been the class. That's been the, the talk. How, how many people have to tell like, let it go? Like the, the hair, the hair gone. Like, hey, man, I tell let her, it go. I done got rid of some of guys. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it ain't there. you got me spraying this, spraying that, putting this on there. <laughs> hey man, your hair cut like seventy dollars now. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of doing this, and I got four other people sitting up here waiting. Cut it off. Cut it off, man. I'm not cutting it no more to do this. I'm I'm doggone suffocating because I'm spraying all this stuff in my area. Let's get rid of it, bro. We have a, we have a Let's member. get rid of it. We we have a member who just um let his let it he let it go finally. He'll be on there next week and yeah. he'll be able to show it off. But. Yeah, he just went bald. We got another member who won't cut his hair, but <laughs> cut your hair, bro. Right. <laughs> cut, cut your, your hair, hair and grow your facial grow a beard. No, nah, you can't grow juice can't do that either. <laughs> just like yeah, he's looking like Ron Harper from the Bulls. Yeah, he need to. <laughs> he needs something. So let me uh, ask you this: um, Do you currently um, work in the shop now, or do you own the shop? I, uh, well, right now I do own the salon. The salon been open for about uh, I want to say about twenty five years now. Okay. Um, What's the location? Uh, One hundred forty seven and Yates Techniques Design Salon and Barber Shop. Yep, Calumet City. Check us out. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm in there. Okay. I was in there today. 
I, I did 16 people. Jeez. So what, what time though, did you start today? I started at 9.20, 9.30. Okay. About 9.30, 9, yeah, about 9.30. Quick with it. Cause what you got around like six o'clock? What I time? Mean, I, I got my own clientele. I go in there sometimes, right now I'm on set doing, doing season four of the shot. So I only go in there on Saturdays mm -hmm. and knock out a few people. But this Saturday, I, we got off at like five in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I did my sister's birthday party yesterday, and that was nice. So I came in there today, and I got a few people, because we off tomorrow, it's Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Most barbershops close on Monday, so regardless, right? Yeah, regardless. Yeah. But you know, if you who you are, okay. you can call that money in. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You can call that money in, call it in, say, hey, I'm here today. They'll be like, what? You can get me on a Monday, Memorial weekend, bro? So you up the ticket? Hell yeah. I'm going to finish my barbecue for this. Right. Hey, you know what? I tell people this. I got bills and habits. Exactly. I got bills you finna pay one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you finna pay one of them. You say you'll pay one of them. Right? You finna pay one of them. I got bills and habits. So, so earlier you just mentioned that your shop been open for 25 years. Prior to that, were you working in another shop? Yeah, for like two and a half years. Something like that. About two and a half, three years almost. And then you just went up and decided like, hey, I need to open up my own. Like what made you decide that? I mean, you know, I had a lot of clientele, man. And it was like, it was crazy. It was crazy back then. It wasn't as many hair salons and barbershops that, that it is nowadays. And especially if, as far as barber schools, but I had a crazy clientele. It was like, they would be outside at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning wait and I would work from like 5 6 a.m. to midnight I mean you got a good product exactly and that's what you want to do you want to create that good product you want to create all the illusions all the facade yep make it all true mm -hmm. make it all true yep it's true whatever the rumors you heard yep they true mm -hmm. whatever think you think you saw yep it's true I had a guy I cut his hair I was I was fast at, you know cutting hair at the same time, you know, doing clients. And I did his hair in like eight, nine minutes. It was flawless. He couldn't believe it. Cause he wanted to get pampered. Mm -hmm. But I had <laughs> nine uh -huh. people sitting in the shop waiting. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't find nothing wrong. But he was still upset that I cut his hair that fast with a quick ball fade. And he still had to pay me that money and he just wanted to spend more time. Yeah. And he fired me. Peace out. It's Not cool. Yet, yeah. We gotta keep everything. Got to keep. <laughs> because up. I mean, some people come for the experience. They, yeah. you know, like you, you know, said, he wanted to get past. But he he's sitting in the mirror like, hell no. And you, <laughs> and, 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 and you ain't and you ain't want no barber. You know what I'm saying? Because this barber, they walk away from you, get to talking shit about the basketball game. You know, you ever seen no mean? They be they be cut your hair for five seconds and they walk off and shit. Get to doing this. Looking at their phone and stuff like that, yeah. man, it's just, yeah. you just, you just quit with it. You probably like, nah, this, this, this can't be real. I, I, I never forget it. He was like, nah, man, I can't come back to you, man. And I was like, okay. Right. He had a good haircut since. Give me that. He's not out of ten, he's right now. Give me that, and it's, it, it, it's okay. Because, you know, people do come and go. And that's yeah. some that's some with the pride that barbers and hairstylists got to deal with sometimes. This is People do come and go. If you held on to every single person that walked through this door, you need a bigger building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. If I held on to every single client that sat in my chair, every single person I sat that sat in my chair from day one mm -hmm. to now, I would probably. I don't know. You have no hands. Your hands yeah. are dead by the Ever since. You know, right. I've, I've, been, I've been cutting since 80 something. Yeah. You know, certain certain clients are stepping stones in your life to put you to the next place that you don't even know, that you can't even see until they until it happens. You know what I'm saying? We push each other. You know, and that's what you got to. You got an awesome product, a beautiful store. Mm -hmm. It started out small. I was buying shirts and Jobs was coming in the shop before a building even existed. Yeah. You put us on the, um, the what's that, the barber convention? Barber oh, yeah. Barber 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 yeah. Bar
Uh, that one is coming up soon, and then we did some stuff with, with the shot. We worked with the shot. Um, we got, you actually got us in touch with um, La La Anthony. Yep. So, um, our son, Cayenne, rocks our hoodies quite frequently. That was a decent experience. You called me at like five in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, say like, man, hey, La La like this hoodie. I need another hoodie. <coughs> Shit, I have to get my ass about the bed. Man. I'm like, man, shit, Lala, I'm getting out the bed. I'm about to make this run, make it happen. You know what I'm saying? But even so, like when we got on the shot, you, you got us in, like we just made it happen. Yeah. You know? And so, that's what it's about sometimes. Yeah. You gotta just do things. It's about knowing people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Being connected, you know. Being an entrepreneur is not a nine to five. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, you don't sit in the cubicle. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't sit in the cubicle. It's, I get it when I gotta go mm -hmm. get it. Yeah, anytime today. Mm -hmm. Anytime. And you know, you look at certain people that got salary caps on their jobs. I'm, I don't want to name on jobs to be boo-booing on them, but you can, you can think in your mind like, oh, to have that job, you make 30000 a year, you make 50000 a year, you make 60000 a year. There's no cap when you're an entrepreneur. You make yeah. what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no cap. There's no stipulations. You know what I'm saying? So go for it. It can be some long nights. Some yeah. long days, you know, but, but you it's yours. Manage. So right. how do, how do you manage that with having a family, having clients, and then having to work on set the week? Like, how do you manage all those relationships to keep everybody happy? You manage it. Like I manage do this. Goals. You say you do this. I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I drink. Because I don't know how I do it either, man. I, you know what? It's just in my body, my soul. You know, God gave me the, the energy and the know-how. It's, it's effortless, you know? it's effortless, you know. I spend time with my kids, I spend time with my family. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just effortless, it's just a wave, it's just, and it's the way the wave is going. Mm -hmm. And yeah, cause you could have been saying, hey guys, I'm working on set. I'm not cutting anybody here anymore. I'm not taking care of my clients anymore. Cause you know, you, it's like levels. Like sometimes when you get to a certain level, you may, Hey, I'm not cutting clients anymore because now I'm cutting celebrities. This yeah, I, I had that mentality at one point in time. Mm. But guess what? I found out a long time ago. I'm using a long time ago. Those so-called celebrities will let you down. Mm. You all are the people that keep me in business for my business. Because those celebrities, they come and go. They'll go with somebody else because they got the money to get anybody on earth to cut their hat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or give them whatever service they're looking for. They come and go. I still deal with the regular people that got regular nine to five jobs or do this because they still need their hair done too. Their kids need their hair done. Mm -hmm. You know? I like I like doing uh, young children that got to go to prom and things like that. You know, I like seeing that picture when they go to prom and that's my work. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, they got to get their hair done too. Yep. Prom is every year. Graduations is every year for all ages. Mm -hmm. Fifth, five years old, eighth grade, high school, college. You know, I still got a pastor. He just got his deposition and doctoral and all that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, he's 60 years old. Yep. No matter what, you when, know, when he you took his picture, picture, that's my word. Man, that haircut is uh -huh. life. That, that haircut, a life changer, man. Like, you it, know? it make you a couple shades lighter. You know what I'm saying? You get that line, <laughs> you, you get a couple shades lighter, you get a little more confidence. You know what I'm saying? So your haircut is key. I mean, you got a good barber, you stick with them, because they're going to always get you right. You ain't oh, yeah. got to tell them nothing, you just sit in the chair. Like, man, I'm I Oh, I'll put you on the, uh, the poster. Oh, oh, we yeah. gonna get into that. You went from ugly. You went from ugly <laughs> to just ugly. That's how I you it, yeah, what, what's that magic? We, what's that? Uh, the poster. Uh, we talked about it on a couple episodes. Solid episode. gold. Solid the gold. The crazy thing, Mark, is like it was at the the convention, and I'm just sitting here. It was just like they had like the list and the people and the numbers, and I'm like. Damn, this is like Frank. <laughs> so I, I know it's not Frank. I've never seen him with a hair like that. Like, this can't be Frank. It was I, a one time hair. Bro, I'm looking at him, looking at him, I'm like, this is an ugly bug. <laughs> I ain't Frank, this is me. Yeah, that's me. That's, that's me, man. Like, but, like, you go into the barber shop and you can literally give me the ugly. Hey, let me get the Frank Dukes. Right. And you can How many people out. actually use that, though? The, the chart? A few people? Oh, a lot of people use the chart. They, they'll, they'll take pieces of it. Like, okay. 
it has like about 30 something yeah. photos on it or whatever and they'll say make my top like this but my sides like this but i won't it's like back like it. this <laughs> so they'll, they'll create something yeah. and then you as a barber you have to create that look okay I just like yeah. never seen. I think the only people I've seen use that is like single mothers. They go there. They don't know. They're just like, yeah, let, let my boy get this. Like, oh, I want that. You gonna get this? Like, you gonna get this? Go. Sometimes just, you can just, just be like, man, I got him. Have you ever just been like, I got you? Yes. I'll just, I'll get you right. Cause you know you got some some single mothers that come in sometimes and they be like, I don't know, just cut it. Right. You be like. <laughs> Just cut it. Do you want it all off or do you want it like with some kind of style? I don't know. And you be like, okay, you as a barber, get on right. You know, you look at the shorty and you be like, okay, I see what's going on here. You gotta assess the situation. Right, right. And then you just boom, go into it. Oh, you God. know, so yeah, boost. that's that's funny. So that's what's up, because you first said, we well, mentioned earlier that you were cutting back when it was Jerry Curls. Now some now some haircuts are just cut the sides off, give me a line, and don't touch the top. Man, these little nasty kids, <laughs> they don't want their top done at all. I, I was like that. I just I went and just line. just line me up. But it's like at least you shampooed your hair. Yeah, true. Some of them don't shampoo their hair, yeah. and they think that's the way it looks supposed to be. Man, shampoo your hair, and then at least I can't be picking something up and covering my face. Like, yeah. <laughs> you got dust like you beating a rug. Mm. Like you beating a rug, it's nasty. It's nasty. So I mean, you know, sometimes I'm charging that same grown man price, less work. Get them on out. Since you want to be like that. Yep. I always talk to. Him, I'm like, man, especially Chicago. You see so many people with hair. I'm like, damn, this barber shop is going out of business. Cause <laughs> like you, but obviously you see so many people with dreads. You see so many people with braids now. You see some people with just the they thing on the top. top. They, going to the still get it done. they still getting it done. Right? I had a thing like, you know, they still getting it done, especially on liners, because the liner makes the liner times better. Damn near is the haircut. Yeah, almost. Yeah. It's like having a picture without a frame. Yep. Yeah, you gotta put the hey, gotta, gotta put it that's, in the frame. That's a perfect analogy for that. You have to put it in the frame. So when you first started working with um celebrities, did you ever get Starstruck or get overwhelmed or nervous, like I mean, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. I mean, for one, Q was one of like my childhood idols and stuff. Ice Cube, like yeah, and you know he is. I worked with him for like sixteen years, and then to have the chance to work with him, I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook that beard up one day. I'm gonna get that beard one day. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get that beard. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get at that beard. You know, as barbers, you know that's how we look. We, we see stuff and we be like. Ooh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And to have that chance to do that and get him, and he was my man for like years. What? That's what's up. So, yes. so it's on Q one like uh, your top five hip hop artists. Oh yeah. Give me your top five. Oh wait, come on, man. That's too hard. That's Most too, right here. Yeah. That's too hard. Let's throw it out. Throw it out. If you miss somebody, then no, we got no to order. Oh man. There ain't got to be no order. Well, I'm gonna always put Jay and Nas out there. Okay. You know, people talk about the biggie and the this and the that. I love, I love both of them, but you know, I, I like, I'm a, I like, you know, like people like Talib, Talib. Somebody tell like, me you're gonna say Rakim. You know, that's yeah, Rakim was one of them, KRS one. I mean, I come up from a different right, era right, where right, hip hop right. was totally different. That's how my father is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I hear people with the the babies and all these little babies and with, <laughs> I don't know none of them. Yeah. Kodak Blacks and stuff. I don't Kodak. know that. I don't know them. Yeah. Where come from? You know what I'm saying? I don't know them to say they one of the top back. Yeah. For one, they ain't have, they don't have enough content. Okay. To to say that they're you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they making the money. Yeah. You know, just like back in the day, Scotty and them wasn't making the money that these ball players making now. Yeah. But is Scotty one of the top five? Yep, defensive, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's totally different. So, man, gotta go with Nas, Jay-Z, Rakim, KRS, I mean, Talib Wali, I got a lot of them. I got a lot of them. But Chicago artists. You didn't work with them all, right? Damn up. Man, Twister, he one of them. I mean, 
You know what? I like Montana. Y'all heard that Montana 300? The new, uh... I ain't heard his, 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 what's, his what's the name? Uh, what is it? What's the way everybody doing it? The, um... Uh, beatbox. Yeah. He did the beatbox. beatbox remix? Oh, yeah. What? what? That's like a million new remix. I gotta listen to what? it. What? Yo. I think it dropped like four days ago or something like okay, that. You. Man, you lose your mind. It's like four minutes long. Yeah. It's tough. Okay. It's tough. I mean, I like Shauna. She, she rough with it. I like Shauna. That's my girl. Uh, man. My arms are kind you, know, you, you, got, you got Kanye? Definitely. I don't care. I know Kanye a little. Woo, 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 woo. But. He's still there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you got to give him his props. Very, very talented. You yeah. know? So, uh, Shot the car. And he makes heat. <laughs> shot the car. Shot the car. You say he makes some heat? And he makes heat. Let me talk about yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a little hard question. Um, outside of people in your shop, give me the top five barbers in Chicago. Wow. So, you can name the guys in your shop. I mean, so, I mean yeah, I mean, Kern. Current solid. That's my dude. I love to do death. Okay. Yep. Uh, he, he nice with it. And he can do everything. I mean, we got we got a different we got this a different breed. Man, I like my dude J Self. Me and J Self, we, we we got out for years. J Self. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know where yet right now, but okay. Oh uh, man, it's a bunch of bars. It's a lot. It's a lot of barbers. It's a lot of barbers I know that know that know of you. Really? Well, I mean, a lot of young guys they know it. They've been doing it since. Man, yeah. hey, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, got my my other dude, Mr. Official. He over there over, over west. He nice with it. They nice with it. You watch me come up. Uh, I like Larry. You know what I'm saying? I, I guys that I mess with. You know, like Joe Flano and all them, uh, they okay. nice with it. He doing that, you know, they doing they, the Major League Barber thing, okay. Larry's Barber College. Man, it's a, it's, it's a bunch to name. My man Wayne. Wayne, where he at? Where Wayne at? He on, uh, what's the name of the barber? Uh, that's on Halston. 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 Well, now you don't cut much of us in college. He, I think he started off in college and he came a long way. Yeah. You never came. You went know, from free haircuts to $5 haircuts to $10 haircuts. To appointment only. Right, to so so appointment only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. appointment only. But working on his craft, man. We all that. did. Yeah, I mean, you just value. Once you, once you know that you're pretty good at something, you start valuing it more. It's just like with anything. Um, with us, we sell clothes. You know, we, we knew we wanted to get to a certain price point. We couldn't just come out and say, hey, this is the price point we want. You have to, you know, build up your clientele right. and your consumers. Correct. Um, we have to make sure we're retaining customers, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the main thing. A lot of people are like, hey, I got a customer there, but how, how do you retain them? You know, how do you right. give them, what type of service you're giving them? You know, are you there on time? You know, are right. you there, you know, helping them out, you know, so... Cause some of us, they take that in, and that makes them come back. One one thing I did have to understand, like I said myself when I with the business, but you can only retain so many because somebody's gonna always find something wrong. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Somebody's gonna always find fault. Somebody's gonna always have some kind of disgruntlement about themselves or or about the whatever it is that you're doing that you know that you're trying to do right. You know, so. It's okay to retain as many as you can, but you can't hold them all. No, you won't. You won't be able to please everybody. You can't please everybody. Yeah. And that, that was something that I had to deal with myself and not take so many things to heart and just be like, okay, and keep it going for myself to, to keep my own sanity. Mm -hmm. You know, because that was, if, if you're in the business of service, of course you want to be of service and try to figure out what's the problem, what's the solution. Mm -hmm. What can I do to serve you to make it right? Yeah. When you just can't, because a person feels some kind of way, ah, rocks, kick them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like barbershop, especially growing up, it was always an experience. Yeah. Because you only really come in, you know what I'm saying, every other week, you know what I'm saying, so yeah. once every two weeks, it'll shirt something. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Matter of fact, put your hood on. Your hair? Do you need a haircut? <laughs> I was cold. I do need a haircut. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's going? It's still? Oh, you always have it. I stopped oh. it and started. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> a little perm. No, but. Right. <laughs> but yeah, what's, what's, what, 
what what do you have um, planned next? I mean, you already working, you know, in film. You got a shop. You know, you're doing well. You got a decent clientele. What's next for you? How do you build your brand to the next I, um, level? I want to buy more real estate. I want to buy more real estate than what I have now. Okay. It's not much what I have now compared to what I've known with certain people that I know that do real estate and things like that. Um, put things in place to to get residual income. Uh, and do like my own production, my own film. Okay. Produce, produce content, you know. Produce, Mark. You know what I'm saying? Produce more films and movies and stuff like that. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind making my own little, you mm -hmm. know. Now you, you own your own trailer, right? Yes. Okay. I do have a, it's a universal trailer. You can use it for hair and makeup. You can use it for, uh, I do a lot of back to school events with it. Okay. Um, you can use it as a production trailer. You can use it for an artist. Like if an artist want to use it as their wardrobe training, you know, okay. changing clothes and things like that. Um, so yeah, I had it for like eight nine, eight, nine years. I've done it. I've used it for a lot of different events. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. That's what's up. So um, I want to do a pop up shop somewhere. We can know to Trailer. Yeah, load the trailer. Man, I don't know, man. We didn't do it. Pop up. Yeah, it'd, it'd be different with this, though. Yeah. We cut in half, some clothes. We could do an event, you know what I'm saying? We got, have event. A, we got the pillars, times nothing but heat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Event, you know, summer going up, dope. summer going back. Yeah, we could figure something out. We, we could definitely put something to the works, you know. But um, where can the people find you on? Give out your social media handle. Uh, one word Techniques Barbershop. And that's on Instagram? It's on Instagram. Instagram Techniques Barbershop. And on uh, my Facebook page is Techniques Media Group on Facebook. Techniques Media Group on Facebook. And Techniques Barbershop on Instagram. Any other, um, any other advice for the young barbers out there or people that want to be barbers or right, something I'm like that? I'm looking for a female barber. Okay, looking for a female barber. I'm looking for a female barber, for real, for real. I got some stuff going on that I need some decent barbers that's willing to work. So, you know, that's a good question, Mike. But what advice would you give somebody who's a good barber? Or what advice would you give them to catapult them to the next to be level? Great. To be great, to where, you know, they can get to that price point with people. Because people are paying $50, $100 for haircuts mm -hmm. easily. So, what advice would you give somebody who's good at their talent? But don't have that clientele. They don't have that, um, you know, that big social media following. How? Like, what advice would you give them to get to that next level? I would tell them, don't chase the money. Worry about the content of your people and and get your clientele to a certain place first. You know, because if you only got like maybe fifteen people clientele and you're trying to charge this substantial amount of money. That's fine, but work on getting your clientele first. Because that's just the only amount of people that know you. You need more people to know you need to build. You only as good as your network. Your network's small over here because you charge, you know what I'm saying? So you got a bigger, you got to get a bigger network. Mm -hmm. And all those going to feed off each other into you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. work on your network. Okay. Work on your network, your your uh your group of people that you want to help sustain you that means you well and, and your clients at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So all those things mean something. Work on your network, you know, uh and boost your boost your numbers little by little. You gotta crawl before you walk. Exactly where you walk. Yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Crawl before you walk. Alright everybody, we wanna thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Nothing But Heat. Make sure y'all follow us on Instagram at underscore nothing but heat. Check us out on YouTube. Like, subscribe, share. Um, YouTube page is nothing but heat. Um, just check us out. Make sure y'all hit that follow button. And we'll see y'all next week. We out. We out. Secrets. You want to fight up for me? Heat, heat, secrets. Eat the heat.